on the Level Talk Show. You're tuned to On A Level with Ancobia. This is Muta Baruka. Ayuri. Get ready for some of the hottest talk on radio. The On A Level Talk Show addresses issues that matter to you. Ancobia with On A Level. <laughs> One of the um, arguments we hear is that if we just got education, everything would be fine. Mm -hmm. We all went to school, completed it, college completed it, university completed it. We'd be fine. Mm -hmm. Black and white would just work together and be fine. Mm -hmm. And Gavi then goes on to say, look, our leaders say the race problem will be solved through higher education, through better education that black and white will come together. And he goes on to say that it is not going to happen and that will never happen until Africa is redeemed. First. Right? And then he says, basically, tell them people, and the boy and all them type of people, he, he, he mentions him who are pushing for that, that they will work between now and eternity and they will never see the problem solved if that's the strategy they're going to use. 100%. Okay. I believe in that as well. I, I do believe in that. I think we've had evidence as well. Mm -hmm. We've had evidence with Obama. Obama is the evidence of that speech there. Mm -hmm. Because higher education, we didn't educate, look how much people educated in, in, in America and around the world, black people in their education. We've had Obama go right the way to the president of America. How does that help us? Mm -hmm. What Gav is talking about, the race problem, to see the race problem solved. In fact, when Obama came in, more black people, they said, was getting shot in America. Oh, so he's right. He was right. That's a, that's, a, that's a right statement that we can prove today. All the education that we've got, you understand? Know all the accessibility that we've got, we've been to, how does it help us collectively? Well, some may say, well, it's because you, you got the education, but you're not, you, okay, so what he's saying is that you're getting all this education, but you're not using it for your own purposes. Yeah. So it's not that education is the problem. Is that what you're saying? No, it, it, it's a type of education. It's the type of it's education type, and, and who it serves. And, and who it serves and who's giving it to you. Yes. Because he said earlier on, mm. he said, you could dive down, he's talking about yourself, mm -hmm. education. And as you know, I'm not saying as you know, I can't say as you know, but um, it, is, it is said that to educate, according to where the word comes from, it's actually to draw out of people. And to yes, put yes. People. He talks about that in volume three. Yeah, he does talk about it. He breaks it down. He breaks down education. Yeah. But what education tells you about the other things. Education is what you draw out of people. It's not what you mm. put in people. Mm. So he's telling us to dig down. He's, look, he's looking for us to draw out of ourselves. Education. Mm. That's the education he's talking about. He's talking about the education that they're pumping into our brains. If we take on board all of that education and we become the highest in their system, we will never be able to help ourselves. So you're still serving, you're still serving that system uh, that uh, oppresses you across the world. 100%. Um, uh, 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 but to stray from it, a good book, um, The Miseducation of the Negro, tells us it's the same Carter thing. Carter G. Woodson. It says the same thing. I, 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 and, and I took that on board as well. This is why I mentioned earlier on um, that I am self-taught. Mm -hmm. You understand? I didn't look into the education system to find a way to solve our problems because of things like that. So I look into African history, I look into African culture, I look into African spirituality for our, to see, to find solutions mm -hmm. to solve my present problems. And what I've found mm -hmm. is that education puts you in a box. I don't care what nobody says. Mm -hmm. It puts you in a box. Malcolm X tells us that the slave master will never give you the tools to be free. Professor so Bayina Bella says yeah. it beautifully. Yes, um, it's in that I, context he's saying it. I forget who she was reasoning with, Professor Bayina Bella from uh, Haiti. And they were talking about, um, I think it was Cecil Gustavo she was reasoning, actually. They were both being interviewed. And I think you're talking about ed education and the more of us have an education. And she said it doesn't make a difference because the higher the monkey goes, the more you see his backside. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you see, it's not anything else. You're just seeing more of his backside. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay. Can I just say a beautiful uh, one thing, just quickly? Mm. What I want to say, because I've not educated in the system as such, right? What I find, which is very, very useful, is when I'm around people who are educated in the system, I'm of use to them, they're of use to me. Because they got information that I haven't got, and I can't get it outside because you've got to be trained properly mm. with certain skill sets to be able to can provide certain services 
Now, I haven't got them skill sets because I've not been played in that. Mm -hmm. But you need to also have a mindset to be able to put those skill sets towards helping your own people. You understand? Mm. So I've got that part. My brain is geared towards everything towards. So you can tell me something from the educational system and I can interpret that of how I can see how that can benefit us in this mm. particular way. So it cannot be done with one side of it. We need the education and we need, because I, the, one of Garvey's issues is, is that he never had enough qualified people around him. He tells you that himself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's not fighting against education as such, but it's just that, that what he says alone, if they think that that alone is going to solve our problem, then they work yeah. together. But it's, 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 he's just saying that it needs to be met with something. It needs to be, you understand? It needs mm. to go, Com needs to be complemented. Complemented with your historical, mm -hmm. cultural, African centered point of view. And okay. then education becomes valid, and then education will liberate us out of our situation. So I don't want people to think that it says education is not going to do it. It will do it, but only if it's accompanied with that. Put on the lens of on Ethiopia. The and draw that information out of yourself. Okay. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say that if black people knew their glorious past, then they would be more inclined to respect themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not going to, because time is pushing now. So we're not going to go through necessarily actually to explain everything. He says, though, um, I intend with your help and God's grace to continue because my work has only just begun. And future generations shall have in their hands the guide by which they, they shall know the sins of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. What guide? Is he talking about the speech? He's talking about the, everything that he's doing. Everything that he's doing. Everything that he's doing, his whole legacy, he knew from the beginning, from what I interpret, that he thought originally that he was going to bring us home. But he must have seen at certain points that the FBI was not going to allow that and it was not going to allow it at this time. So we knew that... Bring us home, not all of us, some of no, us. Yeah, yeah. No, bring us home in the sense that once we get what he believed and what I believe still today, if we even have one strong country in Africa, strong, powerful country, it will protect us across the globe. Mm. Just like our Britain can and protect British yeah, people yeah. around the world. Because Britain's strong. And at, at this time of this speech, there was no African... No, no, no. We're all in colonialism. It was only Abyssinia was... Only Abyssinia. Yeah, every, everywhere else was yeah. under colonialism. That's it, yes. Yeah, so, so um, importantly as well, because we haven't touched on the point either. This is 1924, you say? Yeah. You mentioned Carthage, Timbuktu, Alexandria. Yeah. In 1924, I'm telling you that until I picked up a book for my own self, such to read about black history, I never knew nothing about them. Yeah, yeah. And Gav is saying that and who's it saying it to? How many Europeans are in that audience that God is speaking to? Yeah, yeah, None. yeah. It's all black people. So why yeah. has that information come to me? Why haven't I been born and brought up with that information? Yeah, yes, true, true. 1924. Yes, yes. This is our own responsibility. We have not shared this information. Yeah, because I didn't know my history growing up or That's anything. That's what I'm saying. But well, who should have give it to us? Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Are we the waiting? The elders, the elders. Ah, so are we waiting for the education system to teach us this? No. So this yeah. is why he says that Elvis. information is not going to help us. That's why I want to just bring back. But it's that. amazing that he knew it. I even read That's somewhere cool. that he went to see, they were touring the body of Tutankhamen and, to and Gavi and quite a few of them went down to see the body of yeah, Tutankhamen. To I think that was, that was amazing. I was like, wow, I was blown by that. But yeah, that's an excellent point you've just raised. In 1924, he's telling us, look at these great, great civilizations. One of the principal historians he read from was Edward um, Wilmot Blyden. Brilliant, brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant scholar. Okay, he then, so that's the sins of the 20th century. Everything that's been done to the organization, to black people. Them, yeah. They're keeping a record of everything. So we, to come, will know this is what our forebearers before us went through. This is what okay. we went through now. He, he says that if, deaf, if there's any power in death, count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. Mm -hmm. Is he saying that he's not quite what he wants to be? Uh, but that if death has power. Count on me to be the real Marcus Garvey I would like to be. In other words, in death, I'm going to come to mash up nothing. No, this is it, man. This is, this is it. I'm oh, coming to mash up God. love things. If you listen If I may come in an earthquake or a plague or a come pestilence on. or as God, God would have, have me, me, then be assured I shall never desert you and make your enemies triumph over you. Would Will you? I not go to hell a million come times on. for you? Listen to If that. I die in Atlanta, that's in prison, where he was due to go. If I die in Atlanta... My, um, cause the, the trial was, yeah. was, was that's taking why we place, know, right? That's why we know it's 24. Yeah. If I die in Atlanta, Atlanta, my work will only just then begin for I shall live in the physical or oh, the, the spiritual, spiritual to see the day of yeah, Africa's glory. glory. So he's saying, you think you see something, you haven't seen nothing yet, 
my work will really begin if I get to be the Gavi mm. I want to be. Is there mm. a sense in that that there's some sense of failure? No. That he hasn't quite no. become what he wants. He's a, <laughs> oh, it's like, that, you know? I mean, in, in that, you know, this is what makes me... That makes me love Marcus Garvey. Mm-hmm. I'll follow Marcus Garvey. You won't hear many people say that. I'll follow Marcus Garvey to the end of the earth. I would do that. Mm-hmm. You understand? There's no doubt about it. Mm-hmm. And did you hear what he says? He would go to hell how many times for us? Mm. That's a powerful statement to make. Mm. That is devotion that I love to you your so people. Much. I'm so committed I to you. I love you so much. I'm so committed to you that I'll go to hell for you and back. Mm. Powerful. You understand? So that was made, that, that these kind of statements that makes me draw to Marcus Garvey. But why is he saying that to us about because, if death has power? Because, and this why I said I love it because, Garvey, I'd like to be. because he understood, as I said, that he probably was not going to achieve the fullness of what he started out to achieve. So he knew, he knew that the only, if obviously if he goes, he knows that the only opportunity or the only chance of us going to achieve that is going to be in the future. And it's yes. going to be his legacy. It's going to be his spirit because of what he's done mm. that is going to enable us in the future to, to, to lead ourselves to that destiny. He's confident in that. In what I've done, what I've achieved, even though you may say I've gone wrong and I've got you sending me to jail and all the rest of it, I've already done it. You mm. can't stop this now. When I mm. die, you, I become a legend. I become a le- And people in mm. the future will have in their hands, the guide. Hand, the guide of which to liberate ourselves. And the beauty of it is, well, why in death he becomes more powerful is because, you know, sometimes, even if you took Gavi out of the picture yeah. and you're just left with the principles of Gavi, forget the physical man who lived, see the principles that he shared with us, that he taught to us, the everlasting universal principles. Yeah. So you can't kill a liberation no. movement built on universal principles or built on truth. Because it will live forever. So then you pull Gavi back into it. And now we say, look, you see, if I don't get to do what I got to do right now, and if death has any power, so which is the kind of African spiritual thing, yeah, if, if it's true that you, in death you come back alive, that your spirit lives on, mm-hmm. I'm coming back with millions mm-hmm. of us. And he, he says it, it's amazing. He says, I will come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who've died in the West Indies, and those who've died in Africa, to aid you in the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. So we're I saying, you, do you know what I mean? Call on me, call on us, we're coming. Represent. We're Represent. coming, which is very powerful. Yeah. And th- that legacy is this, and this is what he talks about, if death's got power, right? If you understand, he's talking that from an African perspective, you know? It's not from a European perspective. Mm-hmm. From a European pers- perspective, mm-hmm. what power has death got? Mm-hmm. From a European perspective, what this is, other than people jumping up out of the grave and haunting you in that sense, <laughs> you, 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 you understand? But yeah. in African culture, the whole of our civilization is based upon the ancestors. Yes. The guidance from the ancestors. ancestors. You understand? Yes. So Garvey is saying, if death really has power, that means that I've got a chance to influence. Yeah, that, it, doesn't end here. It, doesn't end it, it doesn't end here. It doesn't end here. You understand? Yeah, yeah. That's what you're yeah. saying. So okay. right now, and um, when he says that, I'm to kill Marcus Garvey, you gotta kill me. Because mm. Marcus Garvey is in me. Yeah. So you gotta kill me to kill Marcus Garvey. That yeah. legacy that he's got is in me now. And that's gonna drive Which me. Which is part of the plan that the CIA had to yeah. kill a black messiah and to I stop think, the rise of a black messiah I with Cohen Town Pro. I think personally that I may be wrong, but for me, I think that Marcus Garvey has a greater influence now that he's gone, or can have a greater influence now that he's gone, than he could have when he was there, if he used it in the right way. Because, for instance, I, you know all the time, um, when I'm doing things, I'm doing mm. it through the spirit of Marcus Garvey. Mm. You understand? If I even pray to my God, I'm praying to my God through the spirit of Marcus Garvey. You, you understand? Mm. So I'm not only dealing with the man now. What do you mean praying through the spirit yeah? of Marcus Garvey? That means that if I, because I only, own, I only, I, I look at everything, you know, as you heard, Spectacles through. Mm. So the God that I worship, the God that I realize, the God that I follow, is the God that I have created based upon my own relationship with my with my with my God. So it's an Ethiopian God, it's African God. I couldn't know. So that. it's the same God as Marcus Garvey. It's the same God. It's the same oh, African. So that's what I'm saying. So yeah, when I go the same to that spirit, God, okay. I know that I don't. I couldn't perceive that God without what I've learned from mm. Marcus Garvey. You understand? But I'm saying that when I go to um, when I 
when I go to my God, I ask for that strength. I want that strength. Okay. To do things, you understand? But I'm saying if he's here, he would have that strength. But now he's not here, I can draw strength from him, but I can also draw strength from a higher source, you understand, that I couldn't do if he was here. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So he, he gives me more power to a certain okay. degree. And still can follow everything that he says. He teaches us, which is quite self uh, explains itself. Any leadership that teaches you to depend upon another race is a leadership that will enslave you. And he repeats it twice. Mm -hmm. Really, he really goes into it. Then he talks about our great black scholars. Um, they've gone through the colleges, they've gone through the universities, they've thrown away the blackened record. In other words, those I imagine he's saying those bad aspects of our history that they've come to bring light and shed light on our history. So you haven't got to walk around with like your head down and, and, and everything. Um, he says the other nations did it too. He said the Babylonians did it, the Assyrians did it, French did it in Napole under the Napoleon. He says the Germans did it. Um, in, uh, England did it. He doesn't quite finish the sentence with England, but he says England did it. America did it. So he says Africa with 400 million black people can do it. And if you can't do it, and if you're not prepared, prepared to do it, the only next thing left for you is to lay down and dead. <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. That is so basically, if you don't want to do what you need to do for yourself to elevate yourself, just, just, just die because you're not of use to anybody. Then he goes on to say, and some people may say this is cruel. But he explains in one of his speeches because he says, I just can't come and keep telling you good things about yourself yeah, yeah. and how oh, look how you've progressed. And then you know that progress can be taken away from you in 48 hours. Do you get me? I've got to get on, on your case to make you work hard and do the work. Um, and he says, um, if you cannot do it, if you're not prepared to do it, then you will die. You're a race of cowards, you're a race of imbeciles, you're a race of good for nothings. If you cannot do what other men have done, what other nations have done, what other races have done, then you had better die. 100%. Okay. It's quite self. Yeah, it explains itself. Explanatory. Okay. Some Pan Africanists. But, uh, but remember, it's go after it because it goes. Can we do it? Remember he yeah, yeah, he backs it up. He says, yeah, he can we do it? Yeah. And then the crowd says, yes. yes we can he do says, it. we can do it. Yeah, they we say, yeah. we will do it. We, we shall, shall do, do it. it. So it's an affirmation. And he says, we've prayed to God for vision and for leadership. Mm -hmm. And he's given us a universal vision. Mm -hmm. A vision that will not limit our possibilities to America. A vision that will not limit our possibilities to the West Indies. But a vision that says there must be a free, free and, and redeemed, redeemed. Africa. And... You don't want people to think that just because African nations now got their independence, that they're free and redeemed. No. They're not. The work of freeing and redeeming Africa still has to take place, even in this 21st century. Mm -hmm. Okay, but yes, you're right. He backed it up. So he kind of beat us a little. Yeah. And he come back like, let me soften up. Can we do it? You know we can do it. We will do it. We shall do it. Can okay. I just give a point there? That means that he's Quick, saying to please. those people that yeah. you're not cowards. The people who say, yes, we can do it. You're not a coward. You're not a race of him. But he's not talking to you because you're going to do it. But he's still saying to the people who are out there who are not doing it, also it applies. Yes, yes, yes. Of course it applies. That's why he says to you, can we do it? He's asking them. Can, when they yes. say yes, you, that means that you've taken yourself out of that out of that category of cowardness and whatever. Yeah, yes. The opportunity. Yes. That's why he says, yes, I can do it. And yes. then you're forced to do it. <laughs> because if you don't do it, what do you become? A coward who has to find a, a, a nice, quiet place to just curl up and die. Okay. Um, he goes on to say, well, I imagine some caveats would be like, oh, some Pan-Africanists who are not Christian orientated would be like, just dash that part of the speech away. Christ the crucified, Christ the despised. We appeal to you for help, for succor, which is help, for leadership. When you endeavor to carry your burden up the heights of Calvary, when white men spurned you, when white men scorned you, when white men spat upon you, when white men pierced your side and blood and water gushed forth, it was the black man in the name of Simon the Syrian who took your cross and bore it up the heights of Calvary. And now that we're bearing our cross and the burden has been so heavy, we just ask that you help us all up the heights. Mm -hmm. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, that's beautiful. But some people would say, why is he calling Christ, on Christ? Why is he... Christian. But well, isn't that beautiful? As a Christian, that's his Christ. As a Christian, he's mm. praying to his Christ, his God. And but they're going to say that us. he's called on the same God, the same Bible he's mm. reading, that they gave to your ancestors when they enslaved you on the plantations. Mm -hmm. My man's calling on that same God in that Bible. Yeah. 
and moved and done what he done. We must always say that. You understand? Whatever he called and whatever he worshipped, it must have been of some sense and influence to give him the power and the influence he did to do what he had to do. He must have been seeing Christ differently to the way 100%. most black no, Christians... There's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. For those, there's through no those doubt. Ethiopian spectacles. There's no doubt. This I is know. A completely most, different they would say, chuck it away. Ignore mm. that power. We're not calling on Christ. Mm. I do that all the time. I speak to people all the time. But he, he, you see... Garvey actually says in one of his speeches, he says, um, um, he will not allow the European to trick him about the religion of Christ. He knows mm. that they're trying to trick him. Mm. He said, you cannot take my Christ away from me. You cannot. But he you says understand? in here, the so way he's different. looking at it is like, he says, when white men spurned you, uh, when they scorned you, when they spat upon you, when they pierced your side, is we black man who came to yeah. help you. Well, quickly, just on that point there, mm. it's exactly what I was saying to you earlier. This is what I get from Marcus Garvey. He's not saying that Jesus is white there. I mean, that Jesus is black. Okay. It doesn't make no difference what color Jesus is. This is what I'm saying. Mm. What he's drawing upon is the man who he knows is black, which mm. is Simon the Cyrene. That's what he's drawing upon there. That's what he's looking for to inspire us. Now, whatever color you are, whatever you are, what, when everybody's doing this, when the white man, what did we do? We, we as black people, this is only one black man. One black man obviously carried his cross and Garvey says, because of this one black man, help all the 400 million of us. To show us, you understand, that he's coming to God as an African. He's coming to God based upon our experience, based upon what we have done as African people, which is completely different from the Christians and the people out there who say they follow the Bible. You understand? He's coming okay. specifically from an African perspective and he's saying to God or Christ or whatever, is that look what we have done for you as Africans. You understand? So do this. So come and help us now. But he's not saying help us because we're Christians or help us because... He's not saying that. He's saying okay. we've done this to help you, so now help all of us, all African people, regardless of their religious background. Okay. Because that's his gun. Time is upon us. It's three hours already. Wow. You see what I mean? You try to start to reason, Rasta. I tell you, we can reason... Anne Cobia, empowering the community with the on a level talk show.